Okay, in today's video, I'm going to be going over decomposition reactions. And uh, decomposition reaction is when a single compound breaks down into two or more simpler products. And you can identify decomposition reaction by the fact that you have a single compound on the left-hand side, on the reactant side of your chemical equation. And the right-hand side, you're going to have that compound broken down into simpler components. So these are the products, A plus B. And this is our compound on the left-hand side. You see we have a single compound on the left-hand side of our chemical equation. All right, so here we have some... Uh, decomposition reactions that we're going to do or some compounds that we're going to decompose and let's go through and let's see if we can figure out what the products are going to be and then also balance those chemical equations. So we have uh, water, H2O. We're going to decompose that. That's, that's commonly done by electrolysis. So we have, we know we're going to have hydrogen and oxygen. Those are our two elements and it's going to be broken down into elements. So we want to know is it just hydrogen and oxygen like that, HO, or is it something else? So we want to remember we have our diatomic gases, and you can remember the diatomic gases using this term, Brinkelhoff. We have bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, and oxygen, and fluorine. Those are the diatomic gases. So you can see we're going to have H2 plus O2, oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. They don't exist as elemental hydrogen, elemental oxygen. All right, so that's the... Uh, decomposition reaction for water into hydrogen and oxygen. We know we have our diatomic gases. And um, let's see, we have one, one, we want to balance this. We have two hydrogens and two oxygens. So we're going to put um, a two here. That gives us four hydrogens, and that means we're going to have to put a two here. And I think that chemical equation is balanced just like that. Okay, now we have uh, sodium carbonate. And sodium carbonate is going to decompose into two other compounds. All right, and we're going to have NaO, sodium oxide, but we know that oxygen is minus 2 and sodium is plus 1, so we're now going to have to put a, a 2 right there for our subscript, so that is has a neutral charge overall. And then we're going to ha also have carbon dioxide, CO2. And I believe two sodiums, one carbon, three oxygens, I believe that is balanced just like that. Okay, now we're going to decompose sugar. And we can decompose sugar using a uh, strong acid like sulfuric acid as a catalyst. So um, let's go through and I'm going to show you that decomposition reaction before we go through and predict the products and balance that equation. So let's go do that right now. Okay, we're going to do decomposition of sugar. This is just uh, plain sugar I bought at the store. I have about uh, plain granulated sugar. I have about 100 milliliters of sugar in my beaker. And then to that, as my catalyst, I'm going to add concentrated sulfuric acid. This is 18 molar sulfuric acid. You want to be very careful. It's very nasty. So I have about 100 mils of sugar. I have about 50 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. I'm going to add the two. And I'm going to stir it. You'll see pretty quickly it's going to start to change color. Get it all mixed up nicely and starting to react. Here you can see. That's decomposition of sugar. And the black stuff you see is carbon. The steam you see is mostly water. Of course, it's a little bit of sulfuric acid in there, so you don't want to breathe it. But sugar will decompose into carbon. That's the black that you see. And then most of the steam you see is water because sugar, uh, sugar decomposes into carbon. Okay, that's always a kind of a attention getter. You get that white sugar being uh, broken down, being decomposed into carbon and water. The carbon is the black stuff that comes out of the beaker like that. And then there's water in there also. It's kind of an exothermic reaction because it gets kind of hot, or it is an exothermic reaction, it gets hot. And uh, there's some steam that comes from that. So let's go through and balance that. Uh, let's see, we know that we're going to have carbon. We saw the carbon is just C. And then we know the other product is going to be water, so that's just H2O. And we want to balance that. We have 12 carbons over here, and we're going to have to put a 12 here. And in water, there's a 2 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. You see we can, over here, we have a 2 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in our sugar, so we know that we're just going to put an 11 right there like that. Okay, and I think that is balanced just like that. All right. 
Now, the last one we're going to do is hydrogen peroxide. We can decompose hydrogen peroxide, and I'm going to show you this reaction too. This is a good one. This one is known as elephant toothpaste. So let's go and do that decomposition reaction right now, and then okay, we'll come back. Okay, now we're going to be doing the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. So I have just here a plain glass cylinder. I think this was a flower vase at one point. And to that, I'm going to add about 80 milliliters of concentrated uh, hydrogen peroxide. I think it's 35% hydrogen peroxide. All right. Now to that, I'm going to be adding some food coloring. The food coloring is just for effect. You see I have here green food coloring. Mix that up. And then to that also, I'm going to be adding some plain dishwashing soap. This is just so we'll get some bubbles out of it. The food coloring and the soap are not part of the reaction. Okay, so I'm going to mix that up like that. Now, we have hydrogen peroxide in here, and eventually if we stand here and wait long enough, all the hydrogen peroxide will decompose into water and oxygen gas. But we want to make it look a little more interesting, we want it to happen more quickly, so we're going to use a catalyst. And the catalyst that we're going to use is sodium iodide. So I have a solution here of sodium iodide, and to the hydrogen peroxide I'm going to add the sodium iodide, and the catalyst does not partake in the reaction, it's not part of the reaction, but it is going to make the reaction happen more quickly. It's going to lower the activation energy. So let's add the catalyst and give it a nice little spin and see what happens. So you can see here, we're liberating all that oxygen from the hydrogen peroxide. The bubbles are simply from the soap. The bubbles are filled with oxygen gas. It's an exothermic reaction. You see we've got a little bit of steam here from the water that's also produced and the green food coloring just is for effect. Okay, So that's the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide by a catalyst of sodium iodide and the products of that reaction are oxygen and water. Okay, that's always a, a good attention getter. I think the kids in class always like that. You get all those bubbles from the soap and those bubbles are filled with oxygen gas. So we know from that reaction we're going to produce water and also oxygen gas. Oxygen being one of our diatomic gases. And you can see we have um, two hydrogens over here and two hydrogens over here, but we have three um, oxygen on the right and two on the left, so we know we're going to have to put a two here. That'll give us four oxygens, but then that gives us four hydrogens. So then we're going to put a two here, and that'll give us four hydrogens, four oxygens on the left, and four hydrogens and four oxygens on the right. Okay, so those are all uh, decomposition reactions. We can identify those because we know we have a single compound on the left-hand side of our chemical equation as the reactant, and then we're going to break that down into simpler products, and we can do those can be either elements or compounds. Okay, so thank you very much. I hope that was helpful, and we will see you next time.